When you think of the nervous system, you usually think first of the brain and perhaps the spinal cord. These provide important functions. To get a true picture of the nervous system, we need to look across the body to get a complete idea of the range of its role. In this episode of Psych Boost, Divisions of the Nervous System. In this video, we're going to construct this diagram. If you want a blank one, you can grab it for free on my website. The link's below. So let's start by just saying what the human nervous system is. It's a body-wide system of nerve cells that collects information from the world, processes this information, and then it takes action by directing bodily organs and muscles. And it does this by transmitting electrochemical messages. The nervous system is broken down to two parts, the central nervous system, or CNS, and the peripheral nervous system, or PNS. Let's look at the central nervous system first. This provides complex processing and contains the brain, which of course is where your conscious processing takes place, but it's also where much of the unconscious processing happens. The spinal cord is part of the CNS and this receives and transmits information to and from the brain and body, but it can also perform some basic motor reflexes too. The peripheral nervous system is a body-wide network of messenger neurons that collect sense impressions and deliver instructions to the body from the CNS. Sensory or afferent neurons deliver information to the CNS and motor or efferent neurons transmit information away from the CNS. This is broken down into two parts. The somatic nervous system or SNS, which controls your skeletal muscles. This is a voluntary system, meaning it's under conscious control. You decide to move your arm, for example. And the other part is the autonomic nervous system, or ANS. And this is how you control your internal organs and glands. This is an involuntary system, I mean it's not under conscious control. So you don't decide to beat your heart faster or release more insulin from your pancreas. The autonomic system itself is broken down to two processes, sympathetic and parasympathetic. And both of these work together to regulate your internal environment. The sympathetic branch activates in a stress response. These neurons release neuroadrenaline neurotransmitter and will increase your bodily activities. So your heart and your breathing rate will increase, your pupils will dilate and your digestion will stop. This is often known as a fight or flight response. And I'll talk about this much more in a couple of videos. The parasympathetic branch activates in rest. Neurons release acetylcholine neurotransmitter and will decrease your bodily activities. So your heart and your breathing rate will decrease, your pupils will constrict, and your digestion will be stimulated. Homeostasis is a process by which your internal environment is maintained. And in normal conditions, there's a balance between the sympathetic and parasympathetic systems. In a later video on the fight or flight response, we will go a little deeper on this process. Bonus fact about the nervous system. There are about 100 million nerve cells in your gut, helping you process and digest your food. This is about as many nerves as in a cat's brain. So that's certainly something to think about the next time you're hungry. I hope you found this psych boost video useful. If you did, I've made more than 140 other psychology videos to help you do studies, as well as a website full of free resources. If you want to help psych boost grow, subscribe and like. Also, tell your teacher and anyone else you know who studies psychology about the channel. Thanks for watching. Keep studying.